It's sad to admit, but this vending machine box of this inanimate... No, it's not an inanimate, but it's a vending machine. Has more game, more Riz than most of us. He's pulling in girls left and right. You know, I think Lamis is pretty much all in. She with me last episode. I think she was kind of getting attached. I'm like thinking to myself, how is this happening? Usually isekai shows or these kind of fantasy shows, a harem would inevitably form. But around the fucking vending machine? My man is built diff literally. Let's begin today's reaction though. Hey. This is how she f fishes. Uses a ridiculous power as a kid. And heal me. Insane. Who needs fishing rods, man? You could just punch the fucking middle of the river. <laughs> Explode the fishes out. Yeah, I mean, she led the entire party, right? She, she asked them to help out to go and find Boxo, but damn, this attachment is unreal. Old incident? Important things in the past? Something about her family? Oh, Boxo is like, don't leave me again. Just like how my parents left me. That's, that's pretty fucked up. I wonder what Boxo feels about Namis. Is he actually romantically involved? Or is this more like a parental guardian trying to look over a kid? I don't know, man. Will we? Um... Alright. Maybe they'll actually have a marriage. Is she gonna live in this hut? Little tent? Oh, it's the suits again, meaning that uh, the rich girl is here. Hmm? Yeah, it's the rich girl, Suri. You can't ask us to accept when you don't even know what it is. I guess the bodyguards deeply care about Suri, right? I, I guess this is cute that they're looking out for her. She's actually being very polite today, yeah. Help with what though? Influential merchant family. Magic item. Oh, we can do a show and tell with Boxu and blow everyone out of the water. Yes, yes. Another girl in Kanashi. Maybe she's like a competitor. She's probably like another rich girl. Yeah, look at her face. <laughs> Arrival. Okay. Let's uh, uh, we gotta fight with another rich princess. Let's go show her Boxo. There she is, maybe? Mm, Suri has the curls though, you know? Look at this smile. Look at this grin, man. And remember, they're just kids. Imagine a competition, the passive aggressiveness when they're older. Oh my goodness. There's the princess laugh. Jeez! So mean to each other. Maybe they just want to be friends. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Wow, we're, we're actually just fighting. We're, we're verbally fighting. Yeah, this is not a children's conversation, man. What the f- Hastily prepared? No! No! I wonder her who her. She keeps doing that laugh. wonder who her engineer is. But how are you gonna compete with the vending machine though? <laughs> You've got our own princess laugh, dude. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta retain your composure. This is actually fun, watching two little rich kids fight. <laughs> It's a staff. It's a wooden staff. All right, come on, let's see it extend and change. Come on now. Bro, he, that's a fucking wooden stick! You put a metal tip on it? This is bullshit! Scam. Scam. It's not transforming. It's some bullshit, dude. Everybody else is like, this is boring, dude. What is this? This is all bullshit, bro. Oh, Kanashi's time. What does she got? She was pretty confident. Huh? That's her engineer? He looks like a shitty person based off of his smile. 
Is this a coffin? Huh? Certain monster. It's just a robot. Okay. She... Kyulami seems to recognize something. Hasn't been discovered. Therefore, they actually embedded someone's soul into this object. But it's forbidden. This guy did a forbidden act. Destroyed a whole damn... You think that's what happened to their old village? Or... I don't know. M maybe it's related. Maybe not. It seems... I don't know. What if there's a human inside, you know? Oh, it's going rogue. The human soul's going rogue. It's not compatible with the body. Hey. How are we going to fight this? Kill the creator. Oh my god, this is actually kind of... <laughs> when it gets on all fours like that, it's actually terrifying. Let him die. Let him die. No. He deserved this. Kyulami's going to stop? Yo, bodyguards, can you do something? Oh, there's so many. What the? Yo, I swear one of the bodyguards has duplicated like 10 times. Damn. Shulam is actually going in. I thought she wasn't so active because she's just like, a, I don't know, like the, the intelligent magical engineer, but no. I think it worked. She is so empathetic towards these. She truly is the best magical engineer. Your research, my ass. You fucking did a forbidden technique. You fucking cheater. Yeah, we should have let this guy die. Am I mean? Yeah. They all know the name. The girl wonder of mayhem. And these are all the different engineers here, yeah? Damn! She's pretty renowned. Oh, never Oh, this is all scandals. Never mind. These are the younger day scandals. <laughs> I thought, I thought she was going to pop up. It's like, oh my god, it's the Hulami. We haven't even shown Boxo yet. Come on. Oh, oh, I wanted to see everybody's reaction to Boxo, but I guess we kind of skip over it. What kind of council meeting is this? Why is Boxo involved here? Um, this seems very important, right? Kane's restaurant. Worst threat. Oh, it says local village restaurant and like a chain restaurant is coming by to take them out of business? Hello there. Okay. So we're going to compete with the chain restaurant by using Boxo? This is actually so real. Like, whenever you have a small town, you have a bunch of local businesses. Whenever a big competitor, like a big company comes in and takes out, like, for example, coffee shops. And then let's say a Starbucks launches in your place. They all go out of business. It's so sad. So that the mega corporation just keeps making money. And then the little guys just die. Oh, it's a literal... There's chains. Like... Here at Chain's restaurant, it's a wordplay. Because, you know, Chain restaurant literally means you have one McDonald's and you have a bunch of different McDonald's, like a franchise, but this literal restaurant is called Chain's restaurant. Hello? Hell no! Uh, unless you pay well. Oh, yeah? What's the compensation? Oh no, I'm getting sold out so quick. What's Box to be like? Oh, how much you gonna pay? Y'all are just... <laughs> Flavors are weak because Boxo is loading you with sodium and MSG. Like, yeah, seasoning doesn't really exist in this world, right? Like a simple cup ramen is gonna blow everything out of the menu here at Chain's Restaurant. <laughs> They're so conniving. Cunning. Look at, look at this evil council. <laughs> I like how it's such a trivial, fun little... It's not really fun because their businesses might go out of business, but it's like, you know, the restaurants competing against each other. This looks like an underground council of execs trying to like... I don't know. Think of a conspiracy. Looks like pasta with scallions. I don't know. It looks... Yeah. 
All they need is just more salt. No? Oh shit, they got a bunch of fast food. Seasoning packets, maybe? Oh, just instant meals, but just more salty, right? Yeah. This is a very unique way of giving Boxo skills to like, not just like eat for pleasure, but now they're actually learning how to make these. Yo, if these menus actually got dropped to the public, shit would be fucking insane. Yo, these guys are getting such an insider deal here. Yeah. But doesn't that put Boxo kind of out of business? Cause now they're gonna be making these items. I don't know how that works. Bro, they set up shop right in front of Chain's restaurant? I mean, it's competition, right? You can do whatever the fuck you want, but like right in front of the store? That's so cheeky. Ah, long line. That's another thing, right? If there isn't enough spaces to scale up to the amount of de like uh, demand, like there's a lot of big lineup. Why would they want to go to the lineup when there's simple carts here? Yeah! We stole your customers because your food is mid. Your service is mid. It's your fault, man. Make some better food. Man, Boxo really helped them out because, again, these are secret menu items that the public hasn't eaten until now. Like, they could have. He could have totally sold it for himself, but. Eh. Goodbye, Chain's Restaurant. The Council of Local Businesses won. Hey, for once, the little guys won. This is great. Oh, Captain. Remember last episode, the Captain was talking about their own goals? What is his goals he's talking about? <laughs> no. But they helped you out, remember? Yeah, this he did help out, bro. Come on. You owe him a favor. Granted, he did that thinking that Boxer would think that he owed him a favor, right? I mean, no, it's give and take. Revenge against the people that... For the village? What is Hilami throwing at the water? You can comfort her? What do we change to? Is that a flower? Oh, flower dispensers cheer her up? Okay. Hello there. Hmm? Gratitude. Oh. Never knew that. This is another classic example of an isekai that doesn't really take itself seriously, but is more slice of life. And the casual themes, like for example, the competition between the two girls to show and tell with their, their magical items. Or even the fucking Chain's Restaurant, right? The local business owners trying to uh, compete with Chain's Restaurant. It's so refreshing, it's so fun, it's so casual, it's such a chill vibe. I love series like this, right? Now, there seems to be an overall goal now because the Menagerie of Fools, the captain has his own goals or wishes, right? That there was this kind of discussed last episode. And in this episode, we kind of learn more about Lamis' past, about how their entire village kind of just disappeared, they just died. That kind of implies that Lamis might already know some leads towards the people that did it. I have no clue, but I guess we'll figure that out in the next episodes. But hey, if you're still here, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, take care.